what are yeah. some of the tips for, I mean, who should, who should be the, doing the facilitating in the team? What, how does that kind of side of it work? Who's, who should be the person up mm. there kind of leading this stuff, you know, to an offsite or a workshop? Yeah, I mean, ideally, the person that should be leading the workshop or facilitating the workshop is someone who doesn't have like skin in the game um, because it can be very difficult to play that part of the um, facilitator who's guiding the discussion and guiding the process and someone who's contributing to the content. Um, ideally, you would have someone, I mean, it doesn't have to be an external facilitator, it could be someone from another team that has got these skills, but someone who is external to the people doing the work, I would, I would suggest. At the same time, I mean, with these kind of big offsites, that's what I recommend. At the same time, you know, the concept behind um, workshop culture is, is that we're bringing these, this way of working um, and these tools into our work every day, in which case it's not always possible to bring in an external facilitator. And what we want is to bring those skills into the team. So it is the leader that sets up the space for those conversations to happen. But yeah, everybody has kind of a, an ability to facilitate if they need to. There's another um, research paper um, that I, I can give you these and you practically put, put them in the notes, but there's one um, on, it's called, um, the concept is called ideational CEO facilitation. And there's some research that shows that the CEOs um, that are, and get the best results of their top management teams are the ones that have facilitation skills. That's really um, interesting. It's by mm -hmm. a researcher called Paul pa Paulus and um, A. Carmelli, and I'll, I'll send you the link, the link to it. But it shows that all you know the, the successful organisations are the ones where you have individuals that are skilled in bringing people together and having those productive conversations. Which, you know, it makes sense that we intuitively we know this. This is the reason we have companies because we need groups of people to do things together. And so it would make sense that within those companies, we have the ability to ensure that that happens. And, and in reality, we know that that doesn't always, that doesn't always happen in the most productive way. It's a really nice way to think about it, isn't it really? So again, if you think about purely offsite as well, the money you're spending on getting everybody in that room mm. as well, having a facilitator in to get the most from those people, you know, if you look at it from a purely financial point of view, it's kind of is no, is a no-brainer anyway, isn't it, really, to do that because of the cost and actually the importance of what you're putting the effort into. Or at the very least, whoever that facilitator is has the skills to be able to do that properly rather than somebody who is volunteering, yeah. right? It's got to be somebody who's got the appropriate skills to be able to do that and to lead that properly anyway. That's interesting, Absolutely. isn't it? And I think what's interesting there, I also take picking up on that point as well, is the skill set for a facilitator is, is again, different, you know, different set of skills for a, for a leader than perhaps yeah. they're used to as well. 